in this video, I'm going to show you how to get featured snippets on Google in five simple steps. Hi everyone, my name is Itamar Blauer. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to never miss out on any future SEO videos. And in this video, I'm going to show you five steps of how I successfully managed to get featured snippets onto Google in ways that might be easier than you think. So before we get started, I do want to say that there are some misconceptions about featured snippets. You don't need to have structured data or any schema to get featured snippets. That's one of the biggest myths that I hear around featured snippets. But anyways, I'm going to show you how I managed to get featured snippets such as this one for my Digital Marketing Trends 2021 article. Now, since recording this video, the positions have moved up and down, essentially, and featured snippets do change over time. And that's something interesting that I've just been noticing through my experiments when I've been doing this kind of stuff. But let's just go ahead and start with the steps that I took in order to get this kind of featured snippet appearing on Google. So the first step that I would take is you need to write about trending topics. And this is really important. And with the example that I've got, I managed to put this post up sort of around the midway point of 2020. And the reason why I did this is that I knew Google would take time in order to crawl and potentially even index this post in the first place because my website at the time was fairly new as well. So it would take a bit more time. But I also did it because I realized that nobody else was doing it at that time anyway. And I think when you get this kind of first mover advantage, when you're starting to write about topics that will be trending, that's really important to consider because if you're one of the first people to get the content out there and people begin to search them, initially they will find your content first. And I found that I was able to generate lots of traffic right from the beginning, even in the months of late August, September, I was generating lots of traffic because people started to search for the trends of digital marketing for the new year and they managed to stumble across my content. So that's one of the reasons why it's important to write about trending topics or even be a psychic in a way and try and envision the upcoming trends within your industry to write about. The second step is about checking related questions. And this is really important because finding questions that might be related to the topic you're writing about will help you because then Google picks up on this stuff and people do ask questions on Google related to different topics all the time in various different formats and various different ways. So even by typing in Digital Marketing Trends 2021 on the SERP, we can see from Google that it's got the people also ask section where you've got a bunch of different questions that people are typing. And obviously, if you click on one of them, it will show more questions related to that question that it is that you clicked on. So what does that mean? That means that you can look at these and potentially try and answer the questions much better than anyone else. You can also use a tool like alsoasked.com and type in the term and search within your respected language and region, and then you'll be able to see a bunch of questions that people ask about that term. So for instance, in this case, with the term being Digital Marketing Trends 2021, we've got different types of questions that you can address. For example, like what are digital marketing trends or what is the future of digital marketing? These are all questions that you can take and start to write about in your content. The third step is you add an H2, so a heading two tag that answers the question. So you need to add the heading tags using the keywords or using the exact phrasing of the questions that you found through the people also asked box or also asked.com. So use that and create headings or H2s more specifically, that's what I did about these questions. You can see the example here. I took the, one of the exact questions that people were asking or I thought people would ask and I created that as the first H2 tag on the post. Now, the fourth step is about summing up the question in two to three paragraphs. And you have to be very explicit about what you include in these paragraphs, because sometimes you don't really want to give away everything that you're going to talk about in the post, because if it shows up in a featured snippet, people might just not even click through to your site. They might 
end up going somewhere else or they might be satisfied enough with the information that you've already put there. So you have to be quite strategic about how you sum up the questions in these few paragraphs. So for instance, what I did here is you have to kind of set the scene in a way when you're answering the question because Google a lot of the time will take these paragraphs and display them as the featured snippet. So I started off here by saying in terms of digital marketing trends for 2021, I specifically included the keywords in there like digital marketing trend and I mentioned 2021 in that same sentence because then Google draws the distinction and relevance between the text here and then it can display it more prominently because it will assume that that is relevant to the question being posed. And then in the second paragraph as well, you start to set the scene and talk about some potential trends, but you don't talk about them in more detail. But what I've tried to do is actually talk about different things that I would be talking about in the article, like social media marketing, SEO, viral marketing. These are all trends that I talk about further in the post, but I wanted to at least kind of summarize them there and then because that will be more likely for Google to understand the topical relevance of these different areas. And then in the third paragraph, I just talk about how there's gonna be a further breakdown. So if people do actually read that and they see it in the featured snippet, they will wanna click through and read the entirety of the blog post. So once you've done that, the step number five is just repeat it for similar questions and do this on all of your blog posts. So any piece of content that you have, take this five step approach and you'll be able to see that over time you'll be very likely to generate some featured snippets because you're understanding how Google picks out this information and what it finds important to display featured snippets. And then you can replicate this process for your blog post and hopefully you will see a lot of success in generating featured snippets but also writing them out in a way that will get you more clicks to your blog posts so thank you guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it if you did leave a like rating below and subscribe if you haven't already i've been itamar blauer thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video hey You've reached the end of this video, but don't worry, there's plenty more great content that you can watch right now. All you have to do is click one of the two video links on the left side of the screen. And also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to never miss out on future uploads.